welcome back to the Figuring Out Podcast. My name's Dana. My name's Dominique. And this is episode 25! 25? Woohoo! That's like a quarter of a hundred. It is. It's it's a quarter. It's a whole damn quarter. That's my the best favorite point. change. My favorite oh change, my God, too! Stop it. Thank you. Wow. But you could do so much with a quarter. Truly. I, and then you could break it down. You can break it down. Two dimes and a nickel. You can do that. You could add some pennies in there, but who who needs them? Pennies make me mad. Do they? A little bit. A little inconvenient if... We can talk about it on the next Pet Peeve episode. Yes, we, of course we can. Dana, how the fuck are you? I'm doing all right. You doing all right? That's yeah. good to hear. I had a snow day, so my work was closed. I didn't have to work, so I slept all day. Oh, hell yeah. I took two yeah. naps. The best. Can we talk about that? Perfect excuse to hide under a blanket for hours. I, I really mainly took the naps to continue a dream that I had the previous night because it was just so weird I needed, like, a conclusion to it, but have not reached it. We'll get back to it. Is it... Have you been able to pick up? No. Nothing? I tried. Okay. It's still a work in progress. How was your week? How are My you doing? My week was pretty good. Um, been a little fucked up. My back's been, like, killing me. Mm-hmm. I have, like, slight scoliosis, so sometimes it just, like, some days are worse than others. Feels like someone's electrifying my back. <laughs> it doesn't help with that atmosphere being so damp. No, it doesn't. But today was a snow day and it was yes. great. Um, I woke up. I got some work done from home because my boss said if the roads were too bad, do not risk it. So um, yeah, it was a nice day to just fall asleep in the middle of it. And now we're here and we're recording and feel pretty good. And we have a special guest this week. Why, yes, we do. Who the fuck are you? Marcus Rosaria. Hi, Marcus. How are you? Good. How are you guys doing? Pretty We're good. Doing great. Uh, so, are you ready for us to interview? Of course. Can Can we hear a little bit about who you are, your hobbies, your interests? Ooh. All right, Marcus. Hobbies. Sports, watching, playing, learning. Okay. Um, music. More recently than before. Mm-hmm. Nothing like major. Just. Start listening to new people, yeah. trying to go explore okay. different genres mm-hmm. of music. Um, say Netflix. Is that really a hobby? I feel like that's just... I mean, like, if you're, if you're binging, I it's feel like hobby. that's kind of a hobby at that point. Like, you're you're doing it all day, every day. Yeah, I feel like you're you can plan your day hours. around it. Yeah. yeah. It. If right. you're putting the hours in, yeah. you can you could chalk it up to a hobby. We'll give it to you. All right, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll count that. <laughs> the, the 2010s hobby. Pretty Netflix. much. Net- binging Netflix. It takes dedication. It really does. Have you That's been... what I'm saying. I can't just... It's not something I can just do. I just no. jump into. No. I need no. to know, all right, 4 to... o'clock, turn off the phone, mom, don't talk to me, I'll be upstairs, leave me alone. It's Netflix I know. time. On the topic of music, we... Okay, every episode, we ask our guest to ask a question for the following guest. Does that make sense? Yeah. I got you. Okay. So, our previous guest asked you... If your personality could be an existing musical album, what would it be? Ooh. That's hard. Yeah, it could be a song even, if you, if that narrows it down at all. Like my personality? Yeah. Something that you just wake up and this, you're like, this is the theme song to my life right now. Mm-hmm. Anything you've been playing a lot on your Spotify? No, I like I have this playlist that I right. made. I've just been shuffling it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's just everything. What's, what's it called? I'm not gonna lie. Like I lifeguard in the summer. Okay. Yeah. So like when I'm on the stand, we're allowed to listen to music. Right. So I named my Spotify playlist Stand Jams. Like jams <laughs> for the stand. <laughs> Honestly, like that. Though. Nice. But it's like it's mostly just like EDM and club music. Okay. Okay. So, so like so so we could to. we could like put it into a genre instead of an album. If I can figure out any EDM albums, because I'm pretty sure those aren't very it, It's hard, thing. because yeah, EDM, right? it's like, it's, uh, like it they sounds. Drop songs. Yeah. <laughs> they drop songs, and... They just drop sounds. They just drop yeah. a lot of good sounds to put you in a good mood, and honestly, like, I always viewed, like, EDM and that kind of music, it's kind of like, if life was a video game, pretty and much, that was the yeah. soundtrack to it, like, it's just kind of like mm-hmm. your background music for getting you through the day. Interesting. Yeah. Possibly the reason why I don't enjoy EDM is because I didn't play video games that much when I was a kid. Perhaps. It was my brother's job. (laughs) So, Marcus, I'm going to start you off a little easy. All right. (laughs) Take us through, like, an average day for you. Like, what are you doing? All right, it depends. Like, halfway through the week, I got school, I got work. 
Okay. So I'd say like we'll do an average work and school day. Okay. Wake up at like. I don't know, 7.30, you got to get to that 8 a.m. Right. It's a pain, but everyone has to do it. Yeah. Um, go to my classes. What do I have? Science. What is it? Physics. I have to take physics. Yeah. Um, Spanish. Uh, intro to technology. Okay. Have you been going to school since um, we got out of high school? Yeah. What are you going for? Sports medicine, like exercise science. Oh, dude, oh, that's no dope. That's so cool. Yeah. But um, my freshman year, I went away to school. For, like, Maryland to, like, play football. Okay. Oh, which uh, college? Uh, McDaniel. Okay, all right. But I, like, completely messed up my whole freshman year. Did oh, you? No. I barely went to class. Uh-huh. When oh, so I did, you're still in the high anything. school mentality. Yeah. You were my like, first year, my first year yeah. was just, like, Easy. exactly. I was just <laughs> going out, and I was going to football practice, and that was pretty much it. So you after were... my first year, I, had, like, realized I had no credits. Yeah. My parents were like, all right, you need to come home. All right. Rain show it us back you can in. handle yeah. it. So then I did my two years. I graduate OCC after this semester. I should be going to Rowan after that. You're going to Rowan after that? I should be going to Rowan after oh, that. Oh, well, congratulations. How's school going? Do you like it? I mean, nobody really likes school. It's yeah. just something that Reasons everyone has to do. Reasons why I didn't do. go to college. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you find what you're studying interesting? At least I'm sure. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Since I was, um, I want to say a sophomore mm -hmm. in like, high school, um, playing sports, like my whole family revolves around sports. Mm -hmm. So like it was cool having, not cool having an injury, but having people deal with it and seeing how they do it i thought was pretty cool mm -hmm. so ever since then i wanted to kind of pick up more and more yeah. on that it was good exposure for you yeah oh, that's awesome one thing leads to another and then before you know it you have a career yeah <laughs> do you have any role models Ooh, i'd say i don't know like cliche answer probably my parents because i know that's amazing yeah because like every every parent wants better for their children right and, like, hearing the stories that my parents had, like, when they were growing up and the stuff that they had to deal with, I'm, I'm like, a little bitch compared to them. Like, I can't handle half the stuff that they went through. Right. And, like, hearing how they came up and the things that they had to deal with compared to how my life is, it's, like, yeah. it's insane. It's yeah. like a breeze compared exactly. to, like, yeah. So, it's, like, I don't know, I guess having seen everything they go through right. makes me feel like I can do twice as much because I have twice the amount of resources that they had mm -hmm. very true which is i guess why like kind of why i go to college pretty much for them yeah so that way they feel like all right we got him yeah yeah to oh where God. he needs to be so like, even though i don't want to do it it's always like all it's right like, yeah it's they, more they for they my wanted this for you for so this is something that you yeah. kind of exactly. owe them it's something i can kind of give to yeah. them yeah but really in the end it's gonna help you out exactly and so you're just like okay thanks again mom and dad i feel i feel like it's so rare for um a kid to be able to say that their parents are their role models because so many kids are just like oh mom and dad you exactly. know what i mean yeah. and it's and not like really... i'm super close with them either it's just okay like every now and then something like you go through something and then right. your parents are there for you and you kind of talk it's like those little increments that we've had yeah. Yeah, help me nice. like see who they kind of yeah. became. Yeah. And they'll always be there for exactly. you. And so that, that, that support that you can't you can't get anywhere exactly. else. Yes. How has your relationship with your parents changed from when you were younger to now? Um like has it gotten worse or has I'd it I'd say it's gotten like better. A thousand times better. Really? Yeah. How so? Because when I was little I think you, you guys have known me since, like, I don't know, middle uh, school, I guess. Yeah, middle school. I met you in seventh grade. There. I think you yes. missed Hoey's class. When, I, when it was around middle school, my dad told me that my mom wasn't, like, my birth mom. That there was another woman that, like, gave birth to okay. me. Mm -hmm. And that she was, like, not a good person. So That's my dad kind of just... That's a shock at that exactly. age. <laughs> yeah. So my dad was like, we stay away from her. If you want to talk to her, let me know. Like, without a problem, we'll let you talk to her. So I kind of, like... At first, I tried... To like kind of have a good relationship with her because right. I was like my mom. Like yeah. I wanted to have a good yeah. relationship with her. But like she kept making like these empty promises like mm -hmm. missing visits, not coming through with stuff that she was going to do. So I like, I started realizing like she's a bad person like my dad said she was. So I yeah. kind of put her off. And then that made me appreciate, I guess my stepmom even like a thousand times more. Right. Because what I found out recently is that I couldn't live with her because of, like, kind of bad things she had going on. Yeah. And because my dad only had, like, half custody, I guess. Right. The, um, when she, like, she kind of went away for, like, I think drugs or something like that. Mm -hmm. She had to go to jail a little bit. And my dad told my stepmom, she's like, we have two options. Like, we can bring him in with us or he has to go into the system. 
So my mom was like, all right, no, obviously we'll take the kid. Mm -hmm. So then I found that out, like, honestly, like three weeks ago. Holy oh my shit. gosh. So like, so you're looking still at my just mom now, I'm like, shocked. exactly. So every time I look at my mom, I'm like, this is the person that pretty much she saved took me you in. Yeah, from, like, she that like terrible yeah, type right. of lifestyle. Yeah. And no one, no one ever has exactly. like has to do that. And she, I'm sure she did that with like open arms. Exactly, with no hesitation. Right. And the only reason, like, I got back in touch with like my mom and that side of the family because mm -hmm. her dad died. Okay. And then I had people reaching out to me like, hey, because I was his first grandkid. Right. They were like, hey, he died. Like, these are the details. I was like, all right, I feel like I should be there mm -hmm. for the people who like know I was his grandkid. Yeah. And I found out like a couple years ago that my mom had two kids, mm -hmm. like my half brothers that were twins. Right. And I never got to see them either. Okay. So I was like, all right, I could see them. I could meet the family that I've never really got to know. Mm -hmm. So I went up there and like, they kind of treat me like a celebrity, pretty much. They oh, haven't no seen way. me That's since great. I was like two years old. Yeah. And like they're seeing me at twenty now, and it was like, yeah. oh my god, like how are you? But it was weird because I was the center focus point of this man's funeral. Yeah, and you were just yeah. like, I. So I'm just this is I'm here for this for. man, and yeah. I had everyone like bombarding me, like yeah, like no one had their their head yeah. on straight. So it was weird, but like it was even worse because seeing her side of the family, like they were in bad shape as well. Really. Yeah. And um, and then I found out that she lost full custody of the two twins now. Oh no! So she doesn't have custody of any of her children. Oh no! So she was like, she looked like she had her stuff together. Yeah. On like the outside. Yeah. But then like once I finally got to meet everyone, there was like she's still a horrible person. Yeah. Yeah. So it makes me appreciate my mom even more that yeah. she got me away from this lifestyle yeah it, it like b blessing in disguise you know like like they say like you only have one mom but sometimes that mom isn't even your biological exactly. mom so like it, it, like for you to not have to grow up in that um unreliable or unstable like position yeah probably was better exactly just show me how much like my parents were warriors and they'll do anything for me yeah exactly that's awesome so i say my relationship is definitely stronger now than what it used to be that's awesome so um looking to the future and if you could sum it up in one word where do you see yourself in five years oh that's crazy first thing that comes to mind we 25 26 i know that's, 26. In, that's insane where do i see myself closer to 30 than where do you hope to see yourself yeah what are your intentions i hope to at least be on the path to a career that i can see myself like mm -hmm. holding on to if not already there mm -hmm. um obviously everyone wants to like have a family but i'm i got like no problem pushing it off until until everything's ready. ready yeah but um oh yeah in five years i think i want to be focused on Pretty much getting it together. Okay. I figured now that I'm 20, like, I can have the next couple of years, I don't know, yeah. soak up the youth that I have and not Now's have to time. waste it. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm 25, I'm like, all right, it's time to time to get real. Time to become an adult and let's, right. let's get it done. So I know. Five years, I want to have my head on straight. That's where I want to be. You know? I like that. Yeah. Definitely. I feel like that's an answer we haven't gotten with that question. Just have your head on straight? Yeah. That's, I think, like, over archingly like that's everyone's goal like around our age like no one says yeah. it but you, you gotta want like that like stability to like or know most that of us think we secure. already have our head on straight yeah <laughs> and or some of us think like... we have our head on straight but you know you never know the world you never know what the world has to offer it always surprises you you can't see your head from your perspective that's very true so, next question next question do you have a saying or words of wisdom that have stuck with you since childhood? Ooh. I don't know if this counts as a saying, but, like, I see myself saying it probably 30, 40, 50 times a day. Hmm. I either say facts okay. or big facts. Okay, and what, and, what, and what does this saying mean to you spiritually, psychologically? I just started now realizing, like, the past couple weeks I say it as much as I do, and it's right? a problem. It's a problem. <laughs> I know it's a problem. I'm seeking out help. Where... It's just like your yes. Like, exactly. Just like... It's so pretty like... much when someone says something to me that is truthful or I can see being like honest. I'm yes. like, oh, facts. Like, so what... so... like an example. Yeah. If someone's like, yo, that girl, she's, she looks really good. I'm like, oh, that's facts. 
So what? It's like it's nothing too complicated. It's no, not, it's it's literally just like yeah. Like it's, so, yeah, it's, it's nothing like, sophisticated. Like, yeah, it's just right. like it's like my way of saying I agree. Yeah, right. It's like my amen. Yeah, it's like it's words that have stuck with you, but stuck with you more of the essence, like gum to the bottom of your shoe. Pretty you can't much. Can't get rid of it. Exactly. <laughs> what, what, I tried. What differentiates between a fax and a big fax? Ooh, what, what just makes the it severity a big, of the that's situation. A very good the severity of the situation. If it's facts, it's it's all right. It's facts. Like it's just something casual. that happens every now and then. Mm-hmm. But if it's like say someone's being a little shady, uh-huh. it's not like it's not something that happens every now and then. You're like, yo, have you realized he hasn't been answering these calls or like haven't been going? And it's big facts. It's a realization. That's like, wow. Big facts is a realization. That's when okay. you're like, whoa, something's Jesus not adding Christ. up right there. That's yeah. so funny. It's not too sophisticated, but I see myself saying it way more than I should. <laughs> Have you been saying it since you were a kid? I've been saying it probably since high school. I got On. into okay. uh, True Chains. Excuse me? Yeah. What? Yeah, you know what? what? Like, like you spin off the rapper Two Chains. Yes. True Chains. Oh. And, and kind of like supplemental to like, facts. By like s- True s- Chains. That okay. is a Jen Tucci uh, original, actually, when we first started hanging out. True Chains. True Chains. I'm just so out of the loop. I'm basically a 50-year-old woman. Holy shit. <laughs> Just using 50s uh, uh, slang to get you through the day. Call that. Call everything the bee's knees. It's all good. I have a bee on my knee. It's fitting. So. <laughs> so, what is a skill that you wish you had or something that you've always wanted to learn how to do? Oh, 100% learn how to speak Spanish. Oh, really? My family is Hispanic. I'm 75% Puerto Rican. Uh-huh. My dad's 100%. His parents came from puerto rico mm-hmm. so i'm second generation in america okay my dad grew up speaking spanish because he lived in a household with people who only know how to speak spanish mm-hmm. but when it came to us he figured mm-hmm. we didn't really need to know it okay but then the older you get you realize how much of a key skill that yeah. is to have yeah mm-hmm. absolutely and it definitely the older you get the harder it is to learn it yes it is it's harder to retain it exactly. is exactly that's so why they we, tried teaching us when we were in kindergarten. <laughs> they did try to teach us in kindergarten. And then we got to 12th grade and they're like, yeah, you're still learning Spanish at a third grade level. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, that's definitely one skill I wish I had. Because my dad, every job he's ever had was because he was bilingual. Mm-hmm. And then he tries to tell us that, oh, you don't need it. Oh, it's so like, helpful though. I was like, well, where would you be without it? It's a yeah. game changer. Exactly. Yeah. You could download Duolingo. I was really just going to suggest that. Mm-hmm. I was just going to say Duolingo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it got me farther than I think high school Spanish ever did. Oh my goodness, that cat scared that lot. I asked Marcus before he came over if he was okay with cats. I'm fine with cats, but like, out of the corner of my eye, I'm like, I definitely (laughs) see something moving. And I like slowly turned because I didn't want to believe it. And then I just saw a head and I was like, oh, okay. That, that is Daisy. I thought I was like tripping. Ghost caught live on podcast. That was great. All right. Are you good? Are you calm? Are you collected? Are you okay with Kloof? I hope so. She will Move? not attack, I promise. Oh, that's fine, that's fine. As long as I don't get attacked, we're good. She might be intrigued by your, by something. She might. That's fine. I'm more than happy to essence. say hello. By your essence. She might come sniffing. I don't know. Would you consider yourself a leader or a follower? And why? It's weird because everyone wants to see themselves as a leader. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Nobody ever wants to like, like view themselves as someone who would take orders from somebody else. Absolutely. I don't want to like... I told you she's gonna come sniffing. She's just creeping. It's fine. But um, <laughs> I would say certain situations where I'm more comfortable, mm-hmm. like depending on the setting that I'm in, mm-hmm. or like the situation like that I'm mm-hmm. put in, mm-hmm. I could become the leader. Right. Like like when it came to sports, like I'm comfortable around my teammates. If they're like, "Yo, you need to run this play," I have no problem with yeah. that. Okay. When I get to my first week in a college classroom, and they're like, "All right." talk about this and figure this out, I don't know what to say. To you shrivel anybody. up, yeah. Exactly, and I'll let somebody else take the lead on it. So it basically depends on your confidence in the Pretty situation. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can get that. Usually I like to, like, like, s- like scope out a situation and see, like, the dynamics at play before mm-hmm. I, like, immerse myself in it. Because you never, like, you want, I want to get a feel for, like, how people, like, are before I'm, like... Exactly. I know I'm yeah. a lot sometimes. Like, I'm, I'm a little much. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm completely comfortable around everyone that I know. Right. Like, I've, I've grown up being the loud kid. Right. Like I'm always loud. Yes. I talk to everybody. 
I have no problem with it. Yeah. But it's some like for some reason like when it comes to strangers, it's like yeah. There's like that automatic guard goes up and you're like, all right, let me see if they're cool first. Exactly. Yeah, you don't know if they're gonna you be like, like no, I, this I like matching bonkers. people's vibes. So exactly. it's like if you're coming off one way, I'll like right. I'll it depends. If I like how you're coming off, like I'll stick to it. Yeah. But if I can't like vibe with you then Exactly uh, like then I can't be comfortable with you, I can't be myself. Yeah, there's definitely a difference. Like if someone's like um if you're like a really hype person, like you said, yeah. another person's a lot mellow and isn't into the, like like, hey, hey, how you doing? Exactly. And then, then you... you'll see me sort of like exactly. right, cool, I can. Yeah, exactly. There we go. Um, okay. You are the ruler of the universe, sort of, kind of. Ooh, a fraction of the way. Thing. And this is because you can make one rule that everyone has to follow. Just one, but everyone has to follow it. What is the rule? There's like so many things going through my head that I wish I could just make happen. You can encompass them all. There is one rule I have to say. Damn, it's like I have it. It's okay. Find your way. It could literally be anything. It could be the most batshit thing that every single person in the world has to do. Everyone has to wear yellow shoes for three out of seven days of the week. I would love that. <laughs> I can't. Like, I'm... Three days? Three whole days. With yellow shoes? Yellow shoes. Yeah, why you have to I feel like a bird. You <laughs> Pair your outfit, boy. <laughs> I feel like I can't pull off yellow. Anyone can pull off yellow. Then you're not going to last in my universe. That's what I'm saying. I see the yellow around here. I, you guys make it work, but I don't think yellow is. You got you to gotta find other things that tie it together. It's a, it's a color scheme thing. Yeah. All right. I'm subconsciously dodging this question. No, Hang it's on. okay. Whatever feels right. We can do a skip. Yeah, yeah I'm going to have to We're going to permit that. you a skip. That's fine. Okay, then I'm going to hit you with... Oh. Where's my phone? Oh, thank God. Because oh, no. I, I wanted to motion to you. I was like, that's a good time to do that. Sometimes we do this, which is a 30-second rant. And you're going to do a 30-second rant. What are you pissed about, Marcus? In... Um... Go. All right. I'm not going to lie. Like, there are times where I'm a little lazy when it comes to meeting people. And I do the usual, like, fuckboy thing. And I'll slide into a DM or two. Yeah. Like, it happens. Everyone... Every guy has done it once or twice. I do it a little bit more than I'd like to admit, but it happens. My thing that pisses me off is getting left on red. I know, <laughs> I know you shouldn't talk to random people, especially people you don't talk to every now and then. I get it. But if you could You're just... You're done. If someone could just tell me, like, yeah, <laughs> I, feel like you I don't want to talk up. to you anymore, I'd be fine with that. Do you I have no problem with We can continue with. this conversation. Not yeah, one. yeah, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Because this is, I'm not going to lie, like, I've been a fuckboy. You probably have known fuckboys in your life. I can give, oh, you, so many I can give you the somewhat standpoint of, like, how we do things. Are you, so you're going to give us not, the, the back? I want to know all the fuckboy shit. All right. Are you still a fuckboy or not, are you a recovering fuckboy? I'm a recovering fuckboy. I'm okay, not going to lie. Okay, congratulations. Let me shake your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Put her there. Thank We're you. proud of you. It's the fact that I can admit it is the fact that... That's when you know. When, when you could you, say... Know when did you realize you were a fuckboy? I'd say, like, probably my sophomore year of college. Like, probably last okay. year. Okay. Was it, like... Or probably going into my sophomore year mm -hmm. of college. Like was it, after like, that my summation of things? Was it one of It was... I think it was, like... I think it was me just looking back one day, and I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> I was on some fuckboy shit. I was like, someone should have said something to me. Someone should have said something? Someone should have stopped me, pretty much. What was the, like, most fuckboy thing you've done? Oh, I don't want to, oh. Can we get a mild fuckboy? Okay, say it in, like, three words or three short phrases. And you don't have to explain if you don't want to. Um, like, three short phrases, like. Three words or Like, I don't want to sound like, like a douche for saying this, but, like. Hit and quit. Hit and <laughs> okay. quit. Okay. Know, oh, that's a good words. one. That's a good. That's a There's good one. a lot more to it, but like, it definitely. That's was, the basis. There's always. It definitely was like bad. So I don't. Okay. Know. Right. No but you could. We you definitely can sit could here. talk about it, but it's definitely bad. It's fine. Like you could sit here and you could you can um subjectively and objectively say that it's bad. No, yeah. No, so it's, that it's that bad. that's no questions asked. But that's no like, questions asked. I don't know. You have to reach a bottom to. Exactly. Because because once you reach that point, there's like. It sounds so cheesy, but you only look up from there because it's like, okay, how can I build on this? Pretty much. Yeah. I 
I the fuckboy culture is so interesting to me. It really is. It's not like it's not something like I'm happy that I was a part of. Of course, of course. But, but like, it's, it's, it's just, not something I realized I was doing in the moment either. Yeah, it, I've, you're one of the first people I've ever talked to that has admitted that they're like I know, they were 100%. a fuckboy. Yeah. No, was, that's awesome. I want. It's weird because I think it like low key started like middle school. Do you know I why think. that you developed this mentality? <laughs> All right. This is my theory because I've been asked this many times. Please. Because like, I'm not, like, I don't care letting people know I used to be one. It's, mm-hmm. like, it's the transition to letting people know you're yes. not one anymore. Yeah. Yes. what, like, nobody really can grasp on. We all got a backstory. So I'd say, like, my first girlfriend was fifth grade. Okay. Like, it was one of those, like, relationships was... Kissing by the exactly. locker. Not even you kissing. You didn't even it was have like, lockers. You were in fifth grade, girly. Oh, I, God, I didn't have my first shit. kiss till seventh grade, so. Oh, wow. I didn't have my first kiss till high school. No. My first kiss was sixth grade. Yeah, seventh grade. Oh, my God. Scandalous. Yeah, so I think we were dating into middle school. Mm-hmm. And then I remember me breaking up with her going into middle school because mm-hmm. I don't know why I remember this like so vividly as if I still have the messages because I definitely texted it to her. Definitely impacted you. Exactly. A lot. I told her, I was like, hey. We're going into middle school now. Like, I think we should break up because, you know, there's a lot more people out there. Think, <laughs> we have to expand our I think our we should horizons. see what else is out there. And, yeah. like, if it's meant to be, then, like, obviously it's meant to be. Right. And I think that was, like, the on switch. Yeah. And then my it's life go was, time. Like, it's it's and then my life was, like, in a dangerous path since then. How long were you and her dating? I want to say, like, I don't know, a couple months. A couple okay. months. So like, it's, like, like, serious. That's it the, pretty was. For a middle school I got her, that's I got like, her a necklace yeah. for her birthday with a big A on it. it was, oh, That wow. rent, like, 70 bucks. Like, back yeah. then, that was so a million dollars. So, as soon as you broke yeah. up with her, you were just like, yo, I'm single. Pretty much. Like, I'm, like, going in the middle school now, I'm pretty, I like, think I'm Like, I dated shit. a girl for a couple months. I know what to do. I had like, the experience. Hit me up. I know how to, like, I know how to hug you at the movies with, like, my friends watching me. So, like, it's cool. You had it down pat. Pretty much. Wow. I know how to hug you at the movies when my friends watching. Some people didn't know. You don't you don't have know how to coordinate the arms. Do I go under? Do I go over? Do you have a little mixture of both? It's harrowing. Did you guys go to the mall in middle school and high school? My mom it. wouldn't let you me. I hated, hated it. it. My like mom it was so me. uncomfortable for me to go to the mall. Like obviously all my friends. I don't know why that was a thing. I don't know if it still is a thing for like no yeah. what else to do like, for to go to the mall. Friday nights. But like mm-hmm. no one had money. No, we just walked around. If anything, like, I don't know, it was later on is when you would go to Apple because I guess middle school is like you legit would just walk around. Mm-hmm. Yep. You'd walk around until like eight and then your parents would come pick you up. Exactly. Yeah. It was just and a, then, pretty much a way for your parents to get rid of you while at the same time you get to, you get to know, act stupid with Exactly. Your and then there friends. was that like semicircle of kids out front who would like smoke cigarettes that they exactly. got from like the high schoolers that were there. Oh my god. What else? Those kids could this shit out of me. What a joke. I was one of those kids. You were one of the high school. No, you weren't the high schoolers. N- you no. were the middle schooler. I was the middle. I was the middle schooler smoking the cigarettes out front. <laughs> I definitely passed by Dan, and I was like, "Holy fuck! Please don't look at me." Yeah, everyone scared was scared of me. That's in so high school, In high school and middle school, I like a lot of people were scared of me just because I have resting bitch face. That's a good feeling. And I got called like, out my bitch face a lot in uh, high school. Like, hard and I didn't fuck with anyone. <laughs> okay. What's a time that you wish you spoke your mind but you didn't? I don't know. I feel like I have the complete opposite problem. You 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 just, have a problem I'm biting just, your tongue. I just talk, talk, talk all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. I just whatever happens, like it'll just come out. There are definitely a lot of times I wish I didn't say stuff that I have said. Okay, but there's so never. I don't know. I've never really held back on saying anything. Yeah. Right. What's something that you've said that you wish you didn't? Like something that immediately like pops in. You're like foot in. I don't know, there was this girlfriend I had for a couple months that I said, like, I love you too. Like, and that was immediately like, oh. That definitely was, like, one thing I wish I didn't say because it made things, like, so... Intense, so awkward. quickly. Awkward, yeah. It made things and awkward. And it was, like... I don't know, I think I, like, said it without, like, realizing I said it. Mm-hmm. Like, the depth of what Like, I was, like, it, like, saying. slipped out. I'm, like, fuck, I shouldn't have said that. All right, just whatever. We'll see what happens. And then it just got... It didn't work. Got worse. But, it hey. Was, I have no problem, like... Saying it, I've definitely been in love before, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but it was like I knew it wasn't like that type of person. That nothing on her. She's a of nice course. person. Yeah, right. But she you just loved wasn't her, but you my type of her. person. Right. Exactly. And I said it to someone that I shouldn't have. Mm-hmm. It was right. definitely not a word you should just throw around. No. It was definitely a serious word to give to people, mm-hmm. and for you to not truly mean it, you shouldn't just give to people. That's a that's a good way. So of that's putting definitely it, something it to I would want to yeah. take back because 
I'm not saying she didn't deserve it. It's just that you just it she wasn't... didn't earn it. Mm. Right. That's okay. a good way of putting it. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind of just like something you mindlessly said, Pretty and you much. didn't realize the depth of what you're saying. And yeah. Hey. Well, now you uh, know. Yeah, there's definitely little stupid stuff, probably in like arguments I shouldn't have said, it's yeah. like a girlfriend or like a parent. But I can't remember like a big one. But that was like a big one I had to like. Yeah, that's that's the one you're, you like. Yeah, definitely shouldn't have said yeah. that one. Take it, put it in your pocket, and learn from it. <laughs> what is See? something? Oh wow, there. Let's let's get a counter for that. That makes one, two. They'll probably be we'll one. See. We'll 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 count back. Oh, <laughs> we'll we'll see. Um, what is something that makes you lose hope in humanity? I say social media. Oh, much. wow. Yeah, that's a good one. Mm. It, like, it messes with me big time. Like, definitely me being in my own world, clicking on social media and, like, mm-hmm. seeing seeing some kid being, like, bullied mm-hmm. for, like, having autism or something like that. Yeah. To, like, to, like, a turtle having a straw plucked out of his nose and, like, yeah. almost die. To, um, shootouts with people. You're exposed to things you wouldn't yeah. have seen otherwise, yeah. but since it's viral, you can't get away from it. Yeah. That could be a blessing, though, of seeing yeah. what is going exactly. on in the world. I like it and hate it at the same time. It's a the blessing ex- and a curse. The exposure, I feel like, is just so in your face. So much, exactly. all at once. Like, you are const- your brain is constantly being stimulated with information. So it's like a blessing and a curse because no it can limit. be one of the greatest tools and also one of the most destructive. Yeah. yeah. It was like my parents bubbled. They didn't really, like, bubble me, but they pretty yeah. much... they grew us up making us think the world was a safe place and like right, cause you pretty much can do whatever you want yeah. Yeah. And that's and what do they were whatever taught. like you mm-hmm. want to do you can make happen and like mm-hmm. that's cool and all but like at the same time now that I'm seeing everything I'm like wow this is it's I wish like, I would have been more prepared for this yes. but like at the same time like I don't know if I had a kid I want to want to tell them about how terrible the world actually is yeah I want Gotta them to have hope <laughs> exactly so right. when they're, they're like oh wow alright this, this isn't the world that I see so I'm gonna try to make it more yeah Exactly. Like the way I like it. The world, and a lot of the times, um, there's just like there's straight facts. Excuse me. There you go. Uh, but and there's also just on. the world is just a lot of the times like what you make it. Yeah. Kind of a good segue into this question. Um, what do you think is something you didn't expect about growing up, or something that no one really told you? I didn't expect not to be as prepared as I thought I'd be to be into really? the future. Really? You surprised I really yourself. Thought, I really thought by now, like, I'd be, like, Five at a nice all. college, getting my, already have my associates, getting my mm-hmm. master's, mm-hmm. pretty much close to having the life that I'm going to have for the rest of my life. Uh-huh. So I definitely expected to do You overestimated, or you underestimated. You underestimated much. How, how much. I was like, oh, this is going to be easy. And then stuff just started flying at me. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Whoa, this isn't as easy as I thought. Dodging all these things to landing me into the spot that I'm now. Not, not that it's like a bad spot, it's just, it's definitely not where I thought I was going to be. Yeah. A couple years ago. Right. It was like, when you asked me that earlier, like, where do you see yourself in five years? I'm like, wow, I didn't even see myself here <laughs> yeah. five years ago. Yeah. So I can have one interpretation and then something throws me off my path, and then five years li- like later, I'm I'm somewhere completely different than I thought yeah. I was going to be. It's Very like, true. it's definitely crazy. Absolutely. Life does fight you. So I have a question. What is something that someone can do that makes you immediately lose respect for them? I would say, like, come off disrespectful. Yeah, okay. Like, right out the gate? Yeah, like, I don't know, coming off arrogant, or like, pompous, or just... I don't know, instantly trying to make yourself seem better mm. than someone you're talking to. Yeah. Like, if I'm talking to someone, first time I'm meeting them, mm-hmm. and you're just telling me about all these, like, what a great person they mm-hmm. are, like, trying to, like, gas themselves up. It's I'm usually like, those people. It kind of makes me step up. I'm like, yo, like, yeah. what, what's wrong with you? Like, why, why do you need you to make that? yourself seem better than me? <laughs> yeah. I, know, I definitely say. It doesn't happen a lot, but, like, you can definitely notice it. And it's it's definitely a vibe you pick up on right yeah. away, and it's 100%. just kind of like, whoa, we could just be on the same level, my guy. It doesn't exactly. have to be like this. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you have a key life hack? Something you picked up over the years that, like, if, if anyone, like, needs advice or, or something, you could be like, this makes things way easier. Here. I mean, yes and no. Like, I have, I definitely have ways that I deal with stuff. Okay. But I don't know if they'd be, like, ideal for it. What's a tried and true one? Something that's worked for you, like, consistently? I don't know if it's, like, appropriate to say. We have no limits, boy. 
Yeah. All right. I'll definitely say smoking weed is definitely something Very, that's okay. helped me. That's helped. Okay. Okay. Great. Tremendously. I agree over with that. <laughs> How has it helped you? I feel like I definitely was a lot. I want to say like, I don't want to say paranoid. I want to like. Were you anxious? Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Like I was a very like excitable kid head. growing up. Uh huh. And like exactly, uh -huh. I was always bouncing off the walls. All over the place. Yeah. And I could never like really see how things were. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Like I just always had things coming at me fast. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I didn't smoke till like my freshman year of college. Okay. And I was like my whole football team did it, and I've never had like. It wasn't like I was peer pressured into. It was like, all right, if, if it's working for everyone else, like why don't I try it? Right. And it helped me like, I don't know. Whenever I was tense, it would help me relax. Mm -hmm. Like, Get your it's head pretty straight. much my deep breath. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty awesome. much something that's. It slowed you down where exactly. you needed to be slowed down. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, because I definitely it's a good nerve settler. It yeah. really is, and I think I think um, sometimes you know, like you get into those uh, thought bubbles. Yeah. And it's just you, you you think back on your day, and I think it's a really good like it gives you a really good opportunity to reflect on things. Like you you, you notice something about your interaction throughout the day that you didn't notice at the time, exactly. but like in that moment you're thinking about it, and you're like, oh, should have done that a bit differently. You know, it's like, it's kind of a good reassessor. I like, that's what Joe, Ro I actually was listening to Joe Rogan's podcast and, um, he, he had said that like, it's, it's similar for him. Like, yes, it, 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 like, it makes him a bit like paranoid and overthinking, but he likes that. He uses it as a tool as opposed to like, a, 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 a crippler. I, I don't know the right word for it, but like he uses it as Enabler. a tool. And it, exactly. So yeah, definitely. That's awesome that it helped. Yeah. It helps. Millions of people around the world. Can't wait for it to be legalized, New Jersey. 420 blaze it eventually. <laughs> what would you say is the biggest misconception of people our age? I don't know. I want to say that we're, like, lazy. Because a lot of people, like, older than us would look at our generation and be like, oh, these are just the kids who are just always on their phone. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. don't have any motivation. Yeah. Don't really know how to handle life yet. But, like, I have tons of friends that know exactly what they're doing and know, like, the path they want to be on and are on the right steps to those paths. Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't know, a common misconception is, like, yeah, that we don't know what we're doing. Even though half of us don't know what we're doing, right. the other half do know what we're doing. We're all just figuring it out. Exactly. Exactly. Facts. Fake it till you make it. And that is number three for the fact counter. <laughs> Not including my slip. Are you a take-what-you-can-get type of person, or are you an all-or-nothing type person? Definitely take-what-you-can-get. Really? I, know, I feel like I definitely don't try to force my way into situations or, like, to get things. Mm -hmm. I don't push. Mm -hmm. Right. I probably should at certain times. But I don't know. It's just I'm, I'm used to just kind of sitting back, waiting for what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. If it's there... Right. It's mine. If it's not, then all right, it wasn't meant to be. Exactly. I'm a big person. Like whatever happens, happens. Okay. I like that. Like if it doesn't, then it's like all right, it's whatever. I'm not. I'm not gonna let it affect yeah. my day. I'm right. not gonna let it ruin me. Yeah. This did happen. All right, I'll work with that. Exactly. Okay. Just like a lot. Well, it can be just like whatever life. And I wasn't is like that you. until I started smoking too. So. There you go. There you go. And it's it's a it's a good way to be sometimes because uh, sometimes you have to think on your toes. Sometimes you just, I don't know, um, can't get bogged down in like. Uh, worrying about what could potentially happen and just taking it as it comes and as it falls into your lap just it can alleviate a lot of that like it like extra thinking yeah. yeah so are you a like let life fall into your lap type person or do you like try and plan like where you're going and what you're doing and i mean i try to plan the best that i can yeah mm -hmm. you well, have a vague outline exactly nobody knows exactly what's gonna happen it's right. pretty much like i said the days i work in school i know like all right i gotta go to work i gotta go to school I say pretty much everything that else happens throughout the day, like, it just happens. Right, okay. Take the day as they come. It's, it's more, much, it, yeah. it can be more interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, I definitely just let it just sit in my lap. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Um, so, let's say that we have penguins, right? Okay. How many of those little fuckers do you think it would take to successfully operate an 18-wheeler? All right, are we talking, like, penguin and Madagascar penguins? Like, they are, like, like intellectually superior penguins. 
they're like they can handle it. They're just their bodies are tiny. They're short and stout. You'll probably need a couple know, of them. I, I'm gonna go with Madagascar example again. Like just four of them, they can do whatever they want. So I'm gonna say four. Yeah, Madagascar like kind of good... answered this question for us. You have one to work the brakes, one to pedal, one to steer. <laughs> okay. One to How are they getting the up there? How they, are they, they figure it out. They, they launch, each, each, they other. launch each other. They launch. They like one man each other. What about the last guy? Do they just like they ladder they, themselves they, down? They ladder. They launch to three up. Okay. And they ladder down. Yeah. I think we can close the case on the penguin question. I, I, I say think at it's, least four. The penguin question dies in this episode. We love you, penguins. Nothing against you guys. You're great. Keep, you ask that keep question often. We've asked it a handful. Of We've times. asked it a handful of times. I think um, when my boyfriend was on, he answered. Similar to you, he did go with the penguins he in Madagascar. Exactly. Madagascar penguins. <laughs> okay, we're going to start wrapping it up. Yes. Okay. Now we have a question for you. All right. Can you ask a question for our next guest? And us. And us. It's just the same question, okay. but we're going to answer right. it too. Excuse me a second. I've got to come go with ahead. a nice one. Think of something good. Something groundbreaking. Mind. Coke or Pepsi? All right. I, I didn't take as long as I thought I was going to, but um, Ding. there was this thing I saw on like Twitter uh, like a long time ago, and like whenever I can remember it, I love asking people it. Okay. okay. It's um, if you found a book and you started reading the book, okay, and then the book was chronologically talking about your life, mm-hmm. and then you get to the point to where you're found the book. And you started reading it. Would you continue to read it to see how your life would play out, or would you stop reading and just let life happen? I think I would really have to fight the urge to skip to the last page and read the last sentence, because that's just how I am with all books, and especially if it came to my life, it's kind of like, okay, how is this bitch gonna? But I don't, I, I don't think I could live with knowing. I think exactly. I would, so certainly. I think I would skim. I would like flip through. Read the at, chapter covers. Not, not even read the chapter covers. Just like flip through, read a random sentence, and be like, "Oh shit, okay." See whose names are like yeah. still popping up. Yeah, a couple years yeah. Ago. Just be like, okay, <laughs> quick browse, and then like as my life goes on, see if those things actually happen or like whatever is happening. Be like, all right, fifty years old. Shit, Tom the container hitting up the local dra- drag shows and such. <laughs> going to be our life. I know. <laughs> Okay, and Dominique, would you like to ask the final question? I would love to. What is something that you would like our listeners to w- take away from your episode? What is the message you are trying to spread? I'm going to have to go with what my boy Logic said one time. Just okay. peace, love, positivity. There you go. Pretty much everyone's in this together. It just makes it easier for everyone's helping each other out. Hell yeah, that's, that's beautiful. She gotta be nice. Yeah. Just be nice to people. Just exactly. be nice to it's people. Really not hard. Just be understanding. Uh, uh, Marcus, where can they find you on social media? On Instagram, Marcus underscore BDG. BDG is a whole nother. It's a whole other. A whole nother organization <laughs> I'm involved with. <laughs> okay. Have you wanted to we guess can, to talk about we that? We can talk about that later. Um, Snapchat, Marcus Rosario03. Don't leave me on red. <laughs> I add everybody, and then I have to add people that don't answer. Okay. You have a strict list. And, and can they find you on funny. YouTube? Yes, you can. My new channel, Marcus Rosario, it's not that complicated, same spelling, Marcus Rosario. Okay. You can find me, big picture of me. I'm going to have content up soon. Don't have anything right now, but it's definitely something to look but forward to. But subscribe to it. Let's and go for to it anyway. Put, and ring that little bell, and then there you'll you get go. a notification yeah. when he posts his new video. There you go. You'll be ahead of the crowd. <laughs> Where can they find you if they would like to, Dana? Well, they can find me on Twitter at Dana Renee underscore, and on Instagram at Dana Renee underscore underscore. That's D A N A R E N E E underscore. And that's D A N A R E N E E underscore underscore. There's two underscores. Make no mistake. Wow. I like my shit complicated. That's so good. Rapper. I had a lot of friends like that in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you have to go and make things so underscored? So underscored. You have underscores in your handles. Well, yes, what I are do. they? If you want to find me on Instagram or Twitter, you can find me at Dommy Darko. It's D O M M Y underscore D A R K and the number zero. 
reach out if you'd like. There we go. There and we I go. think that's a wrap. Thank I you for being a guest on our podcast. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you for letting me come today. Thank You're you for spreading so your positivity. Awesome. Have fun. All right. And we will talk to you next week. Episode 26. We can still count that high. Loud and proud, baby. Woo! We love you. We love you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.